The 5th of December is a national day of Zaha Torte. This is one of my favorite cakes. It's decadent, chocolatey, and it has been delighting people since 1832. The original recipe is of course still a very close guarded secret, but with my recipe, I think I'm pretty close to it. As always, all the quantities and the recipe are written down in the description below the video. Now let's delve into the preparation. Preheat your oven to 175 degrees Celsius. Line the bottom of your round cake tin with a parchment paper. To help the parchment stick to the bottom, place a few smudges of butter underneath it. Grease up the sides of your cake tin as well. This will prevent better sticking to the sides. Take your eggs and separate them into egg yolk and egg white. Whenever you're breaking your eggs, make sure you break them on a flat surface. This prevents any shell getting into your bowl or anywhere else you don't need them. When separating the eggs, be careful that no egg yolk falls into egg white, or you will have problems making your meringue. In a larger bowl, add in your softened butter and your sugar. Mix both of them well until the sugar dissolves and becomes smooth. For this, you can use a standing mixer or a head mixer, whichever you prefer. If you noticed that the butter starts to stick too much to the side of your bowl, just stop the mixer. Take your spatula and scrape the butter off the sides. Once the butter and sugar mixture is smooth, start adding in your egg yolks one at a time. After each one, make sure you mix it well. As the mixture becomes very creamy and light, set this to the side for a few minutes. Meanwhile, let's melt our chocolate. Place a bowl with the broken up chocolate pieces above a boiling water and melt it down gently. You will need to stir it occasionally so the chocolate doesn't burn on the bottom. Once the chocolate has completely melted, take it off the heat and wipe the bottom of the bowl with a towel so the water doesn't drip into our mixture. While your mixer is running, carefully start pouring your chocolate into the creamy mixture. This way we will prevent the eggs becoming scrambled and the chocolate will incorporate itself into the mixture nicely, giving the Saha Torte a lovely chocolatey brown color. Scrape all the chocolate into the bowl, we don't want to waste anything. Mix everything well. Now let's add in our salt. After, in smaller batches, add in your almond flour and incorporate it well. Once you've used up all your almond flour, add in your vanilla extract. It's finally time to add in our flour. Make sure you don't add everything at once, or you will have difficulties combining everything together. Add in a little at a time, until everything is well combined. Set the chocolate mixture aside for now, and let's prepare our egg whites. To the bowl of egg whites, add a spoon of cold water, tiny pinch of salt, and half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Start mixing the eggs vigorously, until you get stiff peaks. To check if the peaks are stiff enough, you can even tip your bowl to the side and see if something falls out. If it doesn't, your eggs are beaten properly. Water your egg whites and incorporate a quarter at a time in your chocolate mixture. Make sure you incorporate it gently. Continue during the folding motion until all the egg whites disappear into the mixture. Once everything is mixed, transfer your cake batter into the greased cake tin. Tap the whole tin on your counter to release any bubbles present at the bottom. Now bake it in the oven for 30 minutes. Make sure to bake the cake on conventional heating, otherwise it might dry out too much. Once baked, remove it from the oven and let it cool in the tin for 10 minutes. After, remove your cake from the tin and transfer it to a cooling rack. Remove the parchment paper and let it completely cool down. As the cake sponge is cooling down, we can prepare our apricot jam. Heat up the jam until it starts to simmer. After, strain it through a mass strainer so we get rid of any hard bits. This will leave our jam smooth and silky, and it's gonna spread nicely over our cake. Now that our cake sponge is cool enough, we'll slice it in half. Here you can use either a long serrated knife or a cake wire cutter like I do here. If you see that your sponge is a little bit crumbly and doesn't cut properly, it means it's not cool enough and you should let it rest for a little bit more. Place the upper part to the side for now. Take your apricot jam and spread it onto your cake. Be generous with it. The more you put in it, the higher the moisture and the sweeter the cake will be. Place the top of the cake back onto your jam. 
Now that the cake is back on top properly, take your cake cutter or your knife and level the top so it's as straight as possible. All the cut-off bits make for a great snack, so while you're making a cake, just snack on them, know what we know anyway. Now transfer your cake carefully onto a wire rack that has a tray beneath it. We'll spread the rest of the jam all over it, top, the sides, as much as you can. Place the whole cake into a fridge for about 15 minutes so the jam hardens and makes the cake a little bit more sturdy. In the meantime, let's prepare our chocolate glaze. Place your bowl above the boiling water and melt down your chocolate pieces. Once they melt, add in your water and mix. You might have a feeling that they just won't come together, but just keep mixing, it'll work. As soon as your chocolate is smooth, remove it from the heat and add in your butter in small chunks. Make sure your butter is at room temperature or the glaze will cool down too fast. Now that your butter is incorporated, pour it over your cake. Mine already cooled down a tad too much, that's why I didn't pour over the sides so well. But nothing to worry about, just use your spatula and spread it around the top and the sides. Once you're happy with your glaze, transfer your cake into your fridge for the next 4 hours. I personally would suggest you leave it overnight, but if you cannot wait, 4 hours should be enough. Once the cake is cooled, and the chocolate has hardened, place it onto a serving stand and decorate it as you wish. I tried to do a little bit of extra painting with my edible glitter, but you can do whatever you wish. Let the cake be your canvas. As you serve your cake, make sure your knife is a little bit wet so it will glide easier through the cake. I suggest you serve your Saha Dota with a dollop of whipped cream. I do hope you make this cake yourself and that you enjoy it as much as I did. If you wish to see more, do like and subscribe and leave your comments down below how yours turned out. Until next time, bye bye!